Dapper's the number one. Hi, I'm David Zucker. I'm an assistant to the moderator, Tim Bolter. I'd like to welcome all of you to the weekly meeting of the Chicago Complex. This is the playground for people who think. Those of you who are actually at the lab, those of you who are here in the restaurants, we have several policies that you should know about. First, a $3 tuition charge will be collected for each of you so that the college will be the greatest expenses. Secondly, the restaurant does not it is not in business for its health. That means that each of you is expected to um, or, order something so that the restaurant can make some money off of us. You might as well get yourself some dinner or have something else to eat and or drink. All right, our format here is as follows. First, we will have announcements. Charlie, we're our Charlie Payock, our coordinator, will lead off with the announcements of upcoming programs. Then anyone else who has announcements of neighborhood or community interest can make announcements, but they must be announcements, not speakers. Save those for later. Then we will introduce our speaker, who will talk for about it. And we'll talk for about an hour on and we request also that cell phones be silenced or that they be turned off during during the presentation all right then we will have after the announcements we will introduce our speaker who will talk for about an hour or so so it'll take a few minutes on the on the evening's topic then after that we will have questions and answers this is like Jeopardy. Questions must be in that form. Again, you save the speakers for the next segment, the rebuttals. <laughs> when Tim portions up, and Tim Bolzer, our moderator, portions up the time per person, and you can get up there and talk about any damn thing that you want to. I uh, we prefer that you reflect the speaker, but you don't have to. You can talk about whatever you want to during, during your portion time. And then the speaker will get the last word. All right, uh, Charlie, why don't you start off with uh, the announcements of the upcoming program? All right, welcome everyone to meeting number 3,701. 701 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. First of all, as usual, I'd like to let you know we maintain a Google email group, as well as a meetup group. There's instructions on our main website. It takes only a few, a minute to sign up for either one of those, little or no traffic. We're highly recommended so that you know of what the upcoming programs will be. As usual, I'd ask everyone there to please mute. Um, during the presentation, after you can do as you like, but during the presentation, please mute, put a big red X uh, over the microphone. And I must ask the people in the room to please uh, keep it down during the presentation because it is picked up um, over the microphone. Now, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our up coming programs. On February the 4th, author Nancy Panis. Um, this is our President's Day program a little early, but what every American should know about Abraham Lincoln. This <laughs> is, should be an interesting program for those of us from the land of Lincoln. On February the 11th, Yours truly, Charles Paydock, will be speaking on was there a real Robin Hood? I've done a lot of research into this topic. The entire, uh, so we're going to be capturing the outlaw. There's world, we'll look at the worldwide appeal over the centuries of this heroic character <laughs> at the college complexes. Don't miss this one. Um, I, actually, we're going to be looking at the concept of take from the rich and give to the poor uh, in some detailed analysis. 
And I'm also going to bring it up to date by looking for some modern day counterparts uh, of the Rob of Robin Hood <laughs> who are circulating among our in our society this very day. Sure. On February the 18th, it's going to be environmental topics. Two young men, experts, are going to be talking about CJA, the um, uh, Climate and Equitable Jobs Act. Equitable jobs is the key to this. But they're going to look at eight, eight aspects of it, as well as how each of you can take advantage of this important ecological uh, legislation, another important program. February the 25th is currently open. So if anyone out there has a topic, has not spoken, this is your opportunity. Okay, transitioning into March. We have three dates open at the beginning of March. And on, uh, uh, but on March 18th, he's here tonight. Enrique will be talking about ownership and manipulation of the social media networks. He feels that uh, control should be taken over by uh, uh, more conservative elements. Another interesting program. Anyhow, I'd also, and in conclusion, I would simply like to point out that we have two archival pages, if you're not aware of this. We have our course, our lecture library with recordings of all the programs um, up to date uh, with uh, presented at the college complexes. We also have another page in which there's three films and PowerPoint presentations uh, are stored. Uh, you look for the guy watch, looking at the computer thing and there's the link right there. And you can get the PowerPoints that have been used as well as films that are recommended in that nature. Anyhow, that's it, sir. Take it away. Okay, uh, Dave, if you're ready, go ahead. All right, thanks. All right, are there any more announcements? Somebody's got to have an announcement. All right, hearing that, I'm going to introduce the speaker. Tonight, we're going to hear from prominent libertarian Justin Tucker, who's going to talk about libertarians in Chicago municipal government. Justin? Okay, Justin. Give it up for Justin on. Tucker. All right, Justin, go ahead. All right. Give us a moment to. Uh, so, um, thank you. Um, just a moment here. It's, uh, oh, gosh. Where did it go? Little technical difficulties, eh? I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. Can you do the share screen at the bottom? So I don't actually need this microphone. What I'll do? Well, we're going to need it. To, you're, yeah, you're you're going to need it to kick it into the. See, the mic goes into the speaker here, and it goes. Oh, to for you guys out here. Okay. Gotcha. I forgot. This is a elderly audience for the most part. Mature, excuse me. I'm just messing with it all. Okay. Um, let me share uh, my screen on Zoom. Well, the thing is, you got you got to turn your mute off. That's supposed to take care of the echo. Unless you want me to mute. Well, hold on. Let's do the test here. Can you guys hear me in the? Uh... Now you guys can hear me in the presentation, right? All right. So. 
I will just talk loud. I'll just speak up for the audience here. There's uh, probably going to be some echoes. So, Tim, turn off your speaker, please. Okay, hang on. I'll, uh... All right. Give me a second. I'll, uh... Okay, speakers are turned off. Go All ahead, right. Dustin. I just want to make sure. Uh, okay, so people can now hear me on... Um... They're going to have trouble hearing you online. You got to use the microphone because it, the speaker feeds into it. Well, I'm, it's using my computer microphone. So okay. can you guys who are listening online hear me okay without the microphone? All right, and then just say yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay. Um, can everybody hear, uh, hear Justin? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. Right, they can, can they hear him? We just after that, yes. Yeah. All right, so can you guys hear me here in the audience? Yes. In the yes. All right, so thank you for joining us today at the College of Complexes. The topic this evening will be libertarians in Chicago municipal government. Uh, some exciting news. Uh, so, just so you guys are aware, uh, Libertarian Party of Chicago will meet um, uh, on the 7th of February. We're going to have uh, Chicago municipal candidates at our next meeting. So far, it's going to be me. So far, it's going to be Chris, uh, who you'll hear from earlier. And it's also going to be Johnny Logalbo, who's a candidate for mayor, RSVP as well. So please join us on February 7th. Uh, so, uh, what is the Libertarian Party? Uh, Libertarian Party is your representative in American politics. It's the only political organization which represents you and has unique and responsible as a unique and responsible individual. Our slogan is that we are the party of principle because we stand firmly on our principles. Libertarians strongly oppose any government interference into their personal, family, and business decisions. Essentially, we believe all Americans should be free to live their lives and pursue their interests as they see fit, as long as they do not harm uh, one another. Started in 1971, we run many hundreds of candidates every election cycle. These candidates seek positions ranging from city council to president of the United States. Each of these candidates helps give a liber give liberty a voice. So the uh, Libertarian Party is held together by its, uh, well, uh, held together is the right phrase, but we have a statement of principles and it's kind of the, um, our baseline. Uh, we, the members of the Libertarian Party, challenge the cult of the omnipotent state and defend the rights of the individual. We hold that individuals have the right to exercise sole dominion over their own lives and have the right to live in whatever manner they choose as long as they do not forcibly interfere with the equal right to others to live whatever manner they choose. Governments throughout their history have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. Even within the United States, all political parties other than our own grant government the right to regulate the lives of individuals and seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. We, on the contrary, deny the right of any government to do these I things and the hold that the government seat. exists, right that again. where government exists, they must not violate the rights of any individual, namely one, the right to life. Accordingly, we support the prohibition of the initiation of physical force against others. Two, the right to liberty of speech and action. Accordingly, we oppose all attempts by government to abridge the freedom of speech and press, as well as government censorship in any form. And three, the right to property. Accordingly, we oppose all government interference with private property, such as confiscation, nationalization, and eminent domain and support, the prohibition of robbery, trespass, fraud, and misrepresentation. Since governments, when instituted, must not violate individual rights, we oppose all interference by government in the areas of voluntary and contractual relations among individuals. People should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and their property for the benefit of others. They should be left free by government to deal with one another as free traders. And the resultant economic system, the one only one compatible with the protection of individual rights, is the free market. So um, 
2022, Libertarian Party of Illinois ran lots of candidates. Uh, so at the just to recap, Bill Redpath, he got 1.68% of the vote. Uh, Schluter and Phillips, who was our governor, lieutenant governor team, they got 2.7%. Dana Robbins statewide, he got 2.2%, but in Montgomery County, he got 5.9%. I'll explain why that's important here in a moment. John Stewart, former professional wrestler, uh, the illustrious one, 2.13%. Uh, Deidre McCloskey, who is, uh, uh, who is a trans icon, uh, and one of the greatest uh, philosophers of liberty alive as we speak. Fortunately, she only got 1.8%. Preston Nelson, Libertarian, he, he got 2.23%. So, um, yeah, these none of these cracked 5%, which has which given us ballot access. And uh, if maybe Illinois did their elections and presidential election years, maybe... Uh, sometimes maybe that could be a boon or not to libertarians or third parties, but we don't know. Uh, just speculation on my part. Um, in Cook County, we ran also several candidates. <clears throat> Thea Satsos got 3.16%. Um, we ran a clerk candidate. Joseph Schreiner got 2.18%. Brad Sanford for sheriff got 2.90%. Michael Murphy, 2.31%. But Nico Satsoulis, our assessor candidate, he got 17.69%. So uh, that's the highest total we've had in Cook County for a Libertarian candidate. Um, so thank you, uh, Nico, for running and running an awesome campaign. I'll explain why that's important here also in a moment. Uh, Jim Hume, uh in a two-way race, he got 7.13%. Uh, Jason Decker, Decker also in a two-way race, 8.65%. And Brandon Size in a three-way race, 3.64%. So uh, I want to congratulate all, all the candidates all who ran and ran good campaigns. Thank you, guys. Um, now, why that's important uh, that um, Dan Robin got 5% in Montgomery County and Nico got over 11% is because Cook County uh, – uh, Cook County has established through 2026 uh, its ballot access in Montgomery County, which is, if you're looking at the slide, is a little further down on the list, newly established because of Daniel Robin, also through 2026. Um, McLean County extended also through 2026. And in DeWitt, Kankakee, McHenry County, Peoria County, and Tazewell counties, they're still, they're still established through 2024. So uh, Cook County, or excuse me, Libertarian Party of Illinois is, is established in more counties in Illinois than ever before. So uh, certainly the 2022 election um, was a very uh, historic one for our party. Um, so I sent out this press release the other day. Uh, voters to elect first libertarian in Chicago municipal government. So basically... Um, I won't read this press release. You're free to check it out at lpchicago.org. But uh, basically, um, Libertarians uh, endorsed uh, Chris Laurent, who's running for police district council in the 14th district, which is south of Belmont, north of Division, west of the river, east of Central Park, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so... Uh, he he uh, circulated petitions. He was one of two to to uh, file in a three person board. So Chris will be the first elected libertarian uh, to Chicago municipal government um, based on that. So, so awesome. I mean, this is this is big for us. So thank you, Chris, for stepping up, and uh, this is going to be great. So um, you may wonder, like, what is a police district council. Well, um, basically, they were established by an ordinance in 2021 uh, to, quote, create a new model of police oversight, accountability, and public safety. The ordinance creates two bodies, a citywide community commission for public safety and accountability with powers to advance systemic reform and police district councils, which will be elected in each district and work to improve 
policy and public safety in their district. So a uh, brand new position, uh, 2023 is gonna be the first uh, year that you can vote in these positions. And in some of the, some of the roles that they do, they build stronger connections between the police and the community at the district level. Uh, they collaborate in development and implementation of community policing initiatives. They hold monthly public meetings. They work with the community to get input on police department policies Policy. and practices. They work to develop and expand restorative justice and similar programs. And they ensure that the community commission for public safety and accountability gets input from the community and they nominate members to the community commission. So uh, those are the responsibilities that a that, that members of the police district councils do. So um, I'm going to now uh, give it over to Chris Laurent, who is uh, going to be the first libertarian uh, who is um, going to be elected to Chicago Municipal Office. You just want to have a seat here. That way, they can get you on the screen. Uh, you know, well, thank you, Justin. Uh, glad to finally get a chance to meet everybody. I, I, can, I can see myself in there. Uh, and I wish we could all meet in, pro in person, but I understand we all have limitations. Uh, very proud to be first of all representing the Libertarian party and um, also camp instrumental Justin was to uh, make certain that this happened so thank you Justin um, matter of fact uh, to kind of take all the jargon that they threw together on what these district councils do uh, I'll give it to you two different ways I'll give it to you the uh, the bullshit way hello Hello? Hello? So that someone else could be accountable rather than them for the for the police oversight. That's that's the truth of the matter. Nonetheless, I'm still happy to be a uh, part of this, especially as a libertarian. My background, uh, professional communicator, I've got two bachelor's degrees in communication and I'm currently uh, working in the legal field now. So I have a strong understanding of how to talk with people, how to build relations between communities and uh, the powers that be, if you will, and uh, the legal ramifications of everything that's involved there. That's all I have, unless uh, we'll get to the questions, we'll get to the Q and A's, but I'm, I'm happy, to, happy to be here and I'h look forward to your questions. This is a short presentation, guys. So there's going to be lots of time for Q and A, and then we can, uh, Hi, you know, uh, get on with this. So um, let me bring up. Sharon yeah, I figured Wayne. you were at dinner. <laughs> okay. Um, so Neighborhood, and I was going to drop off uh, um, the what I got from recycling, so you could put it in the offering tomorrow. But yeah, it was several hours ago. All right, so yes, Chris, check him out. Uh, LaurentForChicago.org. He's got his campaign site up now, and of course, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. No, I, actually, I think the so, church is usually open maybe Tuesday uh, and Wednesday. Laurent. Uh, Laurent for Chicago.com. So I, I, I gotta get, the them, get there with it. Um, yeah. So, so since, uh, as I mentioned, it was a uh, two people out of, of 13 right. council filed, which means that there's potential for a write in. Uh, the yeah, I just have to make sure it gets there before that hour. Yeah. <laughs> And I just happened to so live in Chris's district and filed for. No, I don't need anybody there. I just need to get district into council uh, as well. So I do know I have an opponent. I'm in the office. They are with the working 
family <laughs> organizations. They got millions of dollars. I may not get the right in. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> You know, yeah, actually, I had um, see how uh, how the Chicago politics plays into it. Uh, so, if you live month, in 14th but... District, please write me in, Justin Tucker. Uh, uh, for police district council. Largest political, uh, largest third party by numbers of libertarians in office. Uh, third largest party by voter registration. Uh, um, presidential ticket earned more than 1 million votes in the last three elections. Ballot access for president. Presidential candidates in all 50 states, the last two political uh, presidential cycles, and we are the party of principles. So Uh, technical difficulties. I can't hear anything. Chicago joined. Thanks for joining. Uh, uh, and I guess uh, we we'll move on to Q and A. Does uh, and, and I guess we'll move on to Q and A. We'll go to live to the next uh, connection, um, and then we'll be able to go from there. You got your share screen off. We use the microphone. Screen is off. Okay. Uh, turn off your connections so that they like can, complete connection, like yeah, log just, out. Mean? Yeah, log out, and then that way we'll go live. We'll use the one at that. Okay, and can, I can make a remove you. Good answer. Whatever question, me in that turn, turn on the mic. Yeah. Let me get me get it for you here. It's Q and A. Yes. Yeah, I've got a question. Okay, hang on a minute. We're gonna go first. Get to the mic. Give me the. Give me the. There we go. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on. Get your hand up here. All right. Okay, we got it on now, and I can assume everybody can hear me just fine. All right. Uh, hand just in the mic. Right, we're gonna get uh, you. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, just Luke, give them Luke, this question, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I've got a, 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 a couple of quick questions. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Your... My name is Chris Laurel. Chris, yeah, are you for the, the, this council or are you running as, uh, I mean, what's your position? Before? Did you, were you for creating the, the police council originally or I, I don't quite understand the position of the libertarian candidate for this? Well, Fundamentally, yeah. no, I'm not. A, I, I think it's a, it's a waste of government. Block, block. That's all I need. Honest answer. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I got a question. Should just, we? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I got a quick question for you, Justin. Um, some impressive numbers and a good presentation as usual by you too. Uh, and um, I see that the assessor race, it looked like you got 14 or 15 percent. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I know the answer, but I'd like to hear you say, why do you think that race went so much uh, more in your favor than the other race? Uh, Two-way race, that's why. Oh, okay, now. Uh, there was no Republican running in that race. In fact, um, Not so loud, Justin, just he voted in the Dem primary and got kicked off because you can't be, you know, if you're a Democrat, uh, if you, you got to vote in the primary. If you run as a candidate, you got to vote in that primary. So that person <laughs> voted for a Democrat and disqualified himself from. I thought that I thought it was going to be because he's anti tax so he had a higher. You know, oh, oh. hopefully in in a, in in four years, you know, Nico will be stronger and better and bigger, and we we can go into this again if he wants to run again. 
I mean, not twisting your arm or anything, Nico, but. Don't want to and, and if I could piggyback on that, uh, first and foremost, I've met Nico personally. He's a wonderful guy. And I think he'd be the, the best person for that job because it directly affects our property taxes. Um, hopefully, with the fact that Justin and I will both be in, in municipal government, it will put a little bit more steam in that tank for him to reach the next level in his next election. Okay, I got one here. I'm going to fully pit, fully pull pit. Just, just, out of my position. just give it to Justin. I'll go use this. Just, I'll, I'll repeat the question is back so everybody hears. Justin, what can the Libertarian Party do to help the Chicago Cubs win another World Series? So, Tim. What can the LP do to actually? Sorry. We can't help oh, you I'm sorry. No. I'm uh, you I'm sorry. Just Sid, did you have a question? Out for a minute. Yeah. You should be you should be ready to go. Well, you should be on now. Sorry, Ernie. What is your Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Okay. I can answer that. Uh, I would say it's 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 the uh, it's self ownership and non aggression. So we we feel that uh, you own your body and uh, everybody owns their body and, and therefore you can't violate uh, ownership of other people's bodies. Um, if we if we're and therefore we you know, relationship you know. Because the reason that we're in the majority Peaceful relationships between people is is very important, but we also want to expand that's that to government. Yeah. So yeah, it's not on both we, we feel government should be you know, the least coercive it can possibly be. Uh, give people more freedom. Um, so practically, that comes out to a platform of low taxes, cutting government, this, that, and the other. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and add to that. Uh, and my vision of, of what libertarianism is, it's primarily down to individual liberty. We, as a, as a country, are a collection of individuals that have their own autonomous liberty. So therefore, like for example, and I'm certain it's still fresh in everyone's mind, uh, we have a pandemic. And then people start to say, well, you need to put this medicine in your body or else. That is a clear and direct violation of individual liberty. Does that, uh, does that answer your question, sir? Yeah. Okay, who's next? God, go ahead. Use the, use the. You don't have to come up with those microphones. Well, just shout so they can hear you. I'll try to be loud. Uh, I'll also repeat the question. Good to hear from you, gentlemen. Uh, Work with both of you. Uh, would you comment on? I don't know if this council would have authority over this, but if there were uh, asset forfeiture, this would district council be able to have an oversight of the money? Okay, repeat the question. Well, okay, so your your question, if I if I'm capturing it properly, uh, your question is. Well, we have any kind of oversight as far as uh, uh, asset forfeiture and that sort of thing, or or basically forcible is possession. That, of, is that yeah, outside okay. of your jurisdiction? Well, it, it wouldn't be outside of our purview. Um, this is more of an advisory position than anything else, an oversight. Uh, basically, it, it's it's a glorified errand boy between the police district and the, and the community. So to be 100% honest with you. I think the, the most amount of power that they're going to give us is where we can sit there and not really nominate because basically we're just given a, a stack of resumes for commission members and basically say that guy or that guy. So that's that's kind of what it boils down to. Um, but then again, it, it's an evolving position. I think that uh, once they see that there's room for improvement, I think they'll start stuttering uh, out some of those some of those uh, responsibilities. If you will. Okay, we have a question online next. Jake, is that you at the uh, 2935 oh. number up there, Jake? Yeah, yeah, hi. All right, Can you, you hear me? I'll get you louder. Okay. Can you Jake. hear me? Okay, hang on, Jake. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm just uh, just 
point of order, I'm having trouble hearing. I think the sound. So you need to adjust the sound quality because I'm having hard, having difficulty hearing. But um, yeah, I, I, this is a question for Chris. Um, so why is it that you're running, and what's your philosophy about the? What's your philosophy about the uh, police district board? How would you handle it? I'm going to have to ask you to elaborate a little bit on like, what is my philosophy on the, the position itself or the, or the police district? On the, the position, why are you running? Well, I'm, I'm running first and foremost. I, I, as much as I think that the position is, is basically just a glorified dog catcher, I still think that uh, the common view of our police is very negative, especially with recent events that we, I'm sure we'll get into later. Uh, they're still our neighbors. They're, they're not robotic automatons that would just shift here just to lord over us. They're still our neighbors. They're, they're still part of our community, whether we like it or not. And they do serve a function and they need the support uh, of the community. And I think that starts with better understanding of what their community needs to know and how they can better serve that community. Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else, Jake? All right. Uh, no. All right. Just one other thing. Tell me. Tell us your name again and what district you're running in. Okay. Well, my name is Chris Laurent. Uh, matter of fact, the, the sample ballots that I've seen, I'm number seventy-two, and that's in the uh, 14th police district. Okay. Um, who's got the next question? Okay. Hang on. Uh, all right. Then let's go. Okay, Jake. Uh, wait. All right. I'm going to lower your hand. No, yeah. he doesn't need the microphone because we don't need the mic. We don't use the microphone normally. He, we can hear him. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll repeat the we'll repeat it back. We just can't be running back and forth. And like, yeah, yeah, right. You guys don't have to Exactly. So that's why we don't need to run back. Well, the thing is, what's happening is the mic then feeds into the microphone for the computer. We'll, we'll, we'll repeat the question. We'll repeat the question. It's okay. Oh gosh, we get a guy. What's your question? No, go ahead. Uh, gosh, he can just ask it. All right. All right. You know how uh, we got people that are raising their hands or they're turned around and then they're murdered by the cops. It's just over strike work and put, try to put a magnifying glass on that when cowards are shooting people in the back that you know are not a threat, are not a threat to the cops. I'll answer that. What? Okay, so the question is uh, basically with the, I, I think you're more directed to the uh, Adam Toledo incident here in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken, where it was a young young what? kid that was caught running around with a gun. He dropped his gun and he raised his hand and he was still shot in the back. Does, does that? Well, that okay. Oh, okay. Levon McDonald incident. Then. Actually, okay. Well, since uh, the Levon McDonald incident, um, they they did instill the. the Chicago uh, Office of Police Accountability. And as a matter of fact, this is actually an adjunct. So it does, in a, in a matter of speaking, address that issue. Uh, it's just another layer of oversight. That was part of our meeting. <laughs> it's an adjunct. It's, it's an adjunct layer. I, 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 and I could piggyback off that one. I, and if I were to be miraculously elected, enough people wrote my name in. I would uh, certainly uh, be, uh, you know, work whatever I could for qualified immunity. Okay, Charlie, we'll get you next for the for the. Uh, we'll get you next after Charlie. Go ahead, Charlie. Charlie, go ahead. <coughs> You're muted, Charlie. Well, everyone in the restaurant, please quiet down. Thank you. Uh, numerous organizations, Justin, such as the uh, Independent Voters of Illinois, the Chicago Tribune, Sun-Times, AFL-CIO, Sierra Club, um, and various statewide organizations endorse candidates. How many candidates that you showed us receive an endorsement by a statewide political organization? Which one did I show you today? Yeah, did any? 
Uh, I can uh, not in 2022. So not one candidate in 2020. received an endorsement. I'm sorry. So not one of your candidates received an endorsement from anybody. Not in 2022. In, tw in, two, uh, in 2020, Joshua Flynn, who spoke here at the college, as you may remember, well, uh, was endorsed by the College of Complexes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, excuse College me. College of Complexes does not endorse yeah, Chicago him. Tribune. Excuse me. He, he was endorsed by the Chicago Tribune. Good. Um, and, and in 2018, Steve Dutner, who is our Secretary of State candidate, was endorsed. Uh, by the Springfield Journal Register for its position. So, not in 2022, but we certainly got endorsements in 2023, uh, or excuse me, in, in previous cycles. And I know for a fact that Nisho and other candidates didn't even, uh, you know, have the opportunity to speak with some of these boards uh, to get endorsements. So. Okay, uh, who's next? All right. No, but no, 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 your explanation. No, no, ask your question, Charlie. We're gonna we're gonna get Ellen in the back now. Go ahead, Ellen. Okay. So you're running for this. What's it? The Well, this is this is an adjunct of that as well as so the police oversight that it's right so, so it's it's very familiar with what you were with uh what you bring up um right right and so i you know i have with the pandemic um, i would have been actually in congress but charlie's uh what's your question So what was your question again? What was your question? My, my question is, are you a passive of the police? And one thing, I don't know how much So you asked, asked, you asked uh, not, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You already asked several questions. Question. You, okay. you asked one question already, and it was, which one? Are you a patsy of the police? Are you a patsy of the police? How much did you get? Oh, okay, please. next okay. question. Okay. What about the United Working Families? Where did you get the number of millions of dollars go to the United This Working is a rebuttal. He won't sit down. You already asked the question. Okay, you can. Uh, uh, so you already asked that question. You can ask that question on round two. Okay. Fuck you, Fuck you lady. Uh, no, come on, come on, guys. Justin, no personal. You're attacks. a hypocrite. No, no Justin, <laughs> knock it, knock <laughs> it off, please. <laughs> guys. Okay. All right. It's before, long before she's gonna call me a Zionist or something. Uh, Oh yeah, control the conversation. Oh wait, is she that psycho, Justin? The one you showed me like the messages from? It's a uh, CPU front donating a dozen aldermanic candidates. It's not a CPU. Yeah. It's a what? It's, it's it's coordinated with the Chicago Teachers Union donating to Brandon Johnson and about a dozen or more aldermanic they got millions candidates. Of dollars, and what does it have to do with that? The, the other candidate in their district is back by uh, the United Working Okay, Family so front. it's the white police versus the black United Working Family. Do you think there's a dimension of like the money people versus or the power, the policy? So who's got the next question? What is that? 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 Why do we get the money? Let finish. Why do you ask her question? Yeah. She's just bitching about shit. Can I motion to like suspend her or something? She's being disrespectful. And just, I mean, she just had her rebuttal. She just had her rebuttal. She's just being, Hello. She's just saying inflammatory Hello. crap. There's nothing actually uh, of substance to right say. You know okay. right winger. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna move on to the next question, please. We're gonna ask you guys to close, slow down. And I apologize, but I have to do a little intervening. Ellen, I appreciate you asking the question, but let's not let tempers flare. And uh, 
Let's move on, please. Okay. Sorry about that, my friend. We'll be on there. And hey, Ellen, there might be a, a Zionist in your breakfast. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin, please. All right, let's move. Okay. All right, now, uh, who's the next question? Uh, uh, virtually, uh, that would be. Uh, okay, we have, I don't know who that is, who had, is in the chat, uh, but if you got a question, go ahead and ask it. Hi, um, um, this is uh, Ronma. Um, uh, I'm just here watching wrestling. Um, so I do have a, a, a question. So um, how would um, how would you prevent um, th this kind of uh, police brutality happening? Um, because there's a Titan Nichols video up there. So how would you prevent that from happening? How would you prevent police brutality? Okay. Well, uh, in short, I mean, I, I can't uh, go and show up to every time a police call is made, of course. But uh, they say light sanitizes all. I think the more focus and light that we shine on the police activity, the, the cleaner they'll, they'll, they'll uh And here, speak a little louder, please. I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Can you, can you hear him now, Ernie? I'll, I'll stand up as well as much project a little bit better. No, it, it's from the, it's, it's from the, uh, from the online people. That's why we're using the microphone. Yeah, it, might, it might be the, the sound system. I'm not sure. Okay, go, go ahead, John. So, so to answer your question, I'll repeat myself. Uh, light sanitizes all. And I think that the, the more focus that we can put on police, the, the more cleaner they'll conduct them, themselves as far as uh, you know, any kind of investigation that they have, including uh, adjudication of all kinds of accusations or any kind of, uh, you know, whispers of even any kind of malpractice. Okay, uh, next question. I know we, Alexa, yeah, I, you I, have, I oh, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Let's get, let's get you up in the back and then we'll go to online again. Yeah, my question is, uh, I don't know the exact figure. I went over the last 10, 15 years. The city of Chicago has paid out $300 million in lawsuits um, of uh, damages to bad cops that follow them. Um, what are we going to do about it? What, what group is it? How can we save Chicago for money? Okay, so just if I'm capturing the spirit of your question, it's how are we going to sit there and start saving money from all from the city? Paying for our, the, the mistrust of all the police and their actions. Is that well, yeah, and spe specifically those acted by police. Right, but, right. Yeah, but I mean, just to put it, 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 it in the mic and all that. I mean, sec I mean that's the most important thing. Could, right? could, you, re could well, you repeat the question? Basically, so repeating the question yeah. in, in spirit, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. So Absolutely. basically, the accountability of the police as far as the the, the, what it costs the taxpayers at the end of the day because of their malpractice. Is that accurate? Okay. So misconduct. Misconduct. That's that's another way of saying it, and I agree with you there. So I, I agree with Justin. We need to get rid of qualified immunity, first and foremost. I think uh, if if a doctor and a lawyer has to carry malpractice insurance, so should anybody that sits in law enforcement. And that malpractice insurance covers them for when they sit there and misbehave and they they get sued. So the qualified immunity is the first step. Get, get that out of the way. It says, no, no, you're going to be just as accountable as Joe Smith down the street that does something wrong. You're not going to be covered by, by the taxpayers in the city of Chicago. You know, you got to carry that malpractice insurance. Also, part of my plan is to sit there and implement a program where police are graded and evaluated on a, on a regular basis. And I don't mean every five years, I mean every year, where they have to hit certain certain metrics as far as how they interact with the public, how they perform their duties, their physical fitness, everything like that. And this is where my, my Navy background comes into play. This is something I was subjected to. Otherwise, it'd show me the door and tell me to get out. Yes. So Very good. Very good. All right. You know, considering all the trouble that police have been under with the microscope, why would anybody want to become a policeman these days? What positive benefit would there be to even holding a job with all the criticism they're getting? You're absolutely right. And, and hopefully everybody heard it online as well. You're absolutely right. Why would anybody want to be a, a police officer since the public has such a negative opinion on it? You know, that, the truth is what it is. And a lot of it, I think the police also get a bad rep because not just because you see a bad cop doesn't make them all bad. 
That's the one thing. I think if we build a relationship, keep a clear line of communication with the police and the communities that they police, they can have an understanding and people will want to do the right thing. But, you know, clearly that, uh, you know, if somebody's resisting arrest, of course the cops are going to get tough. And then the public screams abuse. I mean, what about, uh, what about uh, justice? I mean, you know, sometimes it requires use of force. And if they, if they, I know it's a hard thing, but uh, what, what would, what would they actually do to protect people? And they got to be nice all the time. Well, my, my campaign slogan is essentially accountability at all levels, and that includes the individuals, the, the people on the, on the, on the ear that draw the ear of the police. They need to be held accountable just as well as the police. I'm not saying you need to sit there and, and shove a knee into their backbone or cut off their circulation or even maim them in any way. What I'm saying is, hey, look, if you shoot at a police officer, respect and have fire return to. Right. You know, and it's it, they're not no gun, close kisses. And what about what about you know, just to further order? Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Uh, what about what about if you're poking on that police officer with a sharpened flagpole? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. What if you're poking at that police officer with a sharpened flagpole on January the sixth? What if you do that? Uh, yeah. Did they did, did did the rioters on January the sixth? Uh, maybe would, would it be okay for the Capitol police to open up with machine guns? I don't know about machine guns. I think that they use incredible restraint. I I, uh, I think that the Capitol Police did a very good job, and I. Uh, they did but a were they within their rights to to to, to open fire? I think that if, if just because you're a cop doesn't mean you can't defend yourself. No, I'm asking were they were they within their? You said that anybody any police officer that's been attacked has the right to defend himself with a gun. Right? That's what you just said. No, so that, did, that, gun, did, that, did that same right extend to the Capitol Police officers on January the 6th? Well, here's, here's, here's an important thing to remember. As I said, that uh, police are members of our community as well. They are also individuals. Just because yeah. they have a badge on their uniform doesn't make them any less of an individual that's, that's deserving of liberty. Yeah, all of that's a given. It doesn't answer the question. Was to say they have the right to retaliate. Did they have the right? Should they have opened fire? No, I think they might have been over. Think, I don't think it warranted that kind of reaction. I, I think they may. I think it may have it would have agitated the crowd. But you, but you said they have the perfect right to. Yeah, they have a right. Is it? And, and, right and, and the rioters, and the rioters had a perfect expectation of being fired upon. Let's just let's just put the, 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 the elephants in the room. Those rioters were and white. I already asked several questions. Let's move Those on. rioters were white. If they'd have been black rioters, they'd have been dead men. Okay, let's move okay. on. Alexa, Wait, right, weird you know it and I know it. Racism or anything. How can you prove that, first of all? That's stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go ahead, Alexa. You got the question. Yeah. Um. So I'd like to follow up with the uh, whatever the heck the question is from the lady screaming obscenities from the other side of the room. Um. Isn't that, <laughs> her name isn't is that the woman who was um? Her name is Ellen. Basically rejected. What? Her name is Ellen, and she's a good lady. What's okay? Well, is it wasn't Ellen? Wasn't she the lady who um? The Green Party rejected as a candidate because she was a rabid anti-Semite and neo-Nazi. Am I correct in that? <laughs> the Green Party didn't want her to run. That's true. Wrong. Wrong. All right, let's calm down here. Who is that woman? Wow. Sorry. I'm so, I just want to. <laughs> Is, she, is that not true? Is that true? About Zionist quite a bit. I mean, you're like Zionist this, Zionist that, Israel this, Satanist, Zionist that. I mean, All right, you're God, gonna, Justin, gonna, Justin, or something. Come, let's 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 calm down on this thing, please. Okay, her name's Alexa Maffey. I've seen an anti-Semite. Well, anyway, uh, let's, what let's is she? Do? Is she threatening me? 
two, two we're moving on. on. We're moving on. To, to move on, I'm going to, I'm going to exercise the power that no, the British man. House of Commons yeah. has. Yeah. Calm yeah. down and let's yeah. move on. Okay, Charlie, you got the next question. You must be on the Green Party. You got yes, the next question, uh, Charlie. No, right. The other political parties, and I go to websites, and they all list issues and offer solutions that if they're elected, they would do. But the libertarians just keep bringing out over and over again the same old principles that were written in 1971, 50 years ago. Don't you, every campaign has five or 10 top issues. And I have no idea that any of your candidates are going to do anything about any of them. Right. There's enormous poverty in some neighborhoods in the city. Does anybody guess what the Libertarian Party suggests would be done, if anything? How am I supposed to figure this out? Thank you. Doing? Go ahead, Justin, answer his question. All right, so uh, Charlie, I often come here, I've often told you things that we would do. Now, I can repeat that again. For the benefit of our audience, repeat a few of them. So for example, we would, you know, uh, regarding police, we, we don't think that they should abuse their power. Uh, me and Chris both agree on, and many people in the Libertarian Party agree on ending qualified immunity. Uh, and uh, we also think that supplanting, or supplementing rather, uh, the police with your own private, you know, you know, responsible gun ownership is also a good way to deter crime. Uh, that's not as probably as comprehensive as you're looking for, Charlie, but you can't pretend like you've never heard us talk about what we want to do. Is it all explained in your platform pretty much? Yeah, and, and I'll-, I'll It is it. Will you let him answer? You're the chair, be quiet. You be quiet. Charlie? I don't know where they stand. Okay, Charlie, let answer. him finish, please. Okay. He didn't answer the question on what is he going to do about the intense poverty in certain sections of the city. And I'm given the same old document that was written 50 years ago. And I'm supposed to guess, I guess. I'm not going to vote for a candidate that I don't know what he or she is going to do. Go ahead and answer. Right. Well, what kind of property? What property did you say, Charlie? Poverty. Oh, poverty. Repeat the question if you could. Please. How are we going to? People don't have jobs. Our, people our, don't have homes. Police district council. People can't the pay their bills. Hey, Charlie, could you type to precise, uh, concisely the question into the chat? So I think what I think what he's asking for is what are, we going to do about what are you going to do about poverty? What's the libertarian's position on eliminating poverty in um, Chicago, specifically those neighborhoods? Uh, what are you poverty, going to do? Chicago. Good question. All right, to ease poverty. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I I would say cutting taxes significantly is a good way to do it. Um, also, cutting regulations so it's not forever to open up businesses to employ people. Um, and uh, also, um, I mean, that's just a couple I can think of. What about raising wages? Uh, yeah, we can abolish the minimum wage. Well, that's going to eliminate poverty. Yeah, well, not to mention, oh, they, they make less money. Oh, okay, for a guy who claims to follow the format, you really don't follow the format. Well, we're <laughs> we I are, don't see how making less money. Eliminate poverty. Format, but there's a lot of uh, malfeasance going on tonight. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <clears throat> well, I, I'd also like to, to, to kind of hit some other points you brought up. Uh, you said that it's the same platform from 50 years ago. Well, our original platform was written in 1791. But we, but we amended every two years. Uh, pen and ink, pen and ink. Also, I'd like to know where, where in any kind of government constitution or, or bylaws that say that it's the government's job 
to provide and to, to provide work for people. It's that free enterprise. We strongly support free enterprise. So you don't care if people don't have jobs. But Charlie seems to think that you only have a job if you're a government worker. Hey. Who cares if people are unemployed, uh, right? Nick's got a question. Who hey. cares? Yeah, what role do you think this uh, citizen police, I forget the exact terminology, uh, what role do you think we might be able to play in stopping or maybe at least this uh, various uh, civil liberties violations so they have collected? <laughs> concerning data collection and surveillance. So for example, one of my concerns is like license can hear you. Is like license plate readers tracking where everybody goes. That's deeply creepy, dystopian, totalitarian stuff. Is there any role that your police council would be able to address? So the question is what can the police district council do about civil liberty violations? Uh, and so specifically surveillance, surveillance of, of license plate, surveillance and license plate readers. Yes. Well, uh, first and foremost, like I said, it, it, I'm not a, a student of the police. I, I, I firmly believe that they're a vital member of our community. Uh, I think that they should be allowed to do their job on our AI systems do something. So I think that kind of touches on what we're talking about here. Uh, I think, uh, but however, I will, also provide some shade on that as well. I think that this, I don't know if you agree with this, but the city has a program where they're actually paying people to put surveillance like security cameras on their own. I think that anything that, any camera that's pointing towards a public property, in other words, not in the backyard or anything like that, we should network those to, to make the police, give the police the added ability to sit there and find wrongdoers, to basically track down the people that they need to, to solve crimes a little bit easier. That may contrast a lot with a lot of police, but I think, hey, if, if it's something that, that the city's already spending the money on, let's let's utilize it in a way that's productive for everybody and not even that type of problem. So does that include license plate readers? I, well, like I said, that, I don't think that uh, we need AI cameras to sit there and take, take photos when I when I blow through a, a stop sign or when I, you know, like, wait, let the police do their job. You know, that's part of the reason why they're there. One of the number one deterrents of crime is presence. Let the police go there and let them be there at the uh, at the intersection. So one final follow-up is that would it be appropriate to interpret that as we would oppose? I oppose, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Readers to, and answer, to answer your question, yeah, I oppose the, the use of any kind of AI surveillance on any free moving city. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, to answer Ellen's question earlier about where did the millions of dollars, where did I get that from? You can go to opensecrets.org and look at this. It's got list of the recipients and stuff like that. So United Working Families, United Fam or Working Families Party. Let's New York United Working oh. Families. Oh. Okay. Ah, well, whatever. United do we have another question? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, interesting, you speak about the license plate readers. Liz said that here in at the Chicago complex, that there was a man who recently took our license plate. So this is how I I have a hypothesis. What do you think about a hypothesis-based investigation? You know, you, police should be, you know, if, if someone's in the FBI, should they be able to infiltrate the college of complexes and set over people at the speech that they want to speak and put the other ones and have the independent voters party and then tell them that Ellen's a rabbit anti semite and thereby get her pushed off the ballot? I don't think the FBI should. Uh, I don't think that the FBI should infiltrate the College of Commerce. Bruce Arthur, does he, does he have to admit that he is with the FBI? And I greatly, strongly doubt Charlie is in the FBI and is informing on you. We've been pretty hard on it. 
Personal attack. Personal attack. Personal attack. Personal attack. All right. All right. All right. My real name is Bond. Calm down, please. James Bond. Personal attack. Would I investigate as police district counsel? Okay, go ahead. Actually, I'm not with the CIA. I'm not with the FBI. Let me ask you as succinctly as I possibly can. Um, as far as having CIA members or FBI members be a part of the college? Covert. I don't think we should. We should could they be in, the people should be told i think there should be an open forum for anybody that, that wants to yeah, sit there and, and exercise the topic, and yeah. they're pushing me off the topic who in the fbi is doing that tortured by blue have you heard of this book i'm not or familiar with enemies of birth i'm not familiar with it but what touch base i'll get those those titles for me and i'll read up on okay 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 ellen ellen let's uh let's move on charlie in that book too let me give a talk on the fbi he won't let me give a talk about John Byrd. That was the last one. He said we already. This is a personal attack. All right. Uh, but I can talk about Byrd. I am not the subject this Ellen. evening of the college complexes. Okay. Uh, you want to go ahead and try to answer questions for it? For it. What, what, what question am I answering? Um, All of them. How do we deal with corruption at this level at that level? Like I said, light is the is the number one sanitizer. I think the more light that we put on them, the, the more the more P's and Q's are going to be mindful of. Okay. You only get one question per round. Okay, so just, I'm clarifying. Okay. It's okay. My question is: What's your understanding of the whole John Burke? Like I said, my my understanding of John Burke is very superficial. I'm familiar. I'm, the only thing I really personally know about John Burge is that he he was very corrupt, and there's people that are still that basically he kind of got off with a slap on the wrist, in a manner of speaking, where people that have done less have been punished more harshly. It's one of the topics that I intend to do a lot of it, a lot of personal investigation. Okay. Go ahead, Justin. Subject of John Burge because it is a history. B U R G E. B U R G E. I, I thought you said John Birch, B I R C H. I was going to really offer my opinion on that John one. Birch. <laughs> but no, I, I appreciate you bringing it up, and that is something that I do have have uh, anticipation of, of doing some my own study. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's a really, that's where most of the three hundred million dollars, or not most, but a large part, comes from. All right. Who's got the next question? Anybody online or anybody here? Um, all right. Well, I don't know if anybody's got Andy their hand up. One. All right, Andy, go ahead. Uh, Andy, stand up and let's. Okay, loud, Andy. No, Tom Hartman has an article talking about how America stands alone in the world of reality compared to all other modern countries. We're the only country on the planet, really, modern country that doesn't have a proper training and screening system. If you look at what's happening in America, it's deeply depressed. I want to know the Democratic Party is a part of it. We allow people into our police department without screening. Mm -hmm. People that might be up to four black people. Mm -hmm. so we can, it's been illegal to lynch people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what's your question? Keep them on the streets. I'm trying to take a look at how police are hired and treated and trained. Yes, I do. I will definitely look into that. And, and to, to kind of elaborate on something I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you were. Could you, could you repeat the question? I couldn't hear it. I'm sorry. Uh, the question was, uh, what is our outlook in our prescription? Should I say? Please correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Uh, on police brutality, uh, as far as how we are vetting the people that and to go on to become police officers, and how do we how do we maintain that for uh, over time? Is that psychological screening? Psychological screening. This kind of goes into my program, my thoughts on. Hey, look, we need to do an annual evaluation of each of each person. 
if they're starting to sit there and show signs of hey you know they've got some mental issues that need to be addressed they don't get to wear their badge while they get their their mental issues but they, they are getting there they would be removed but they'd also be provided the treatment that they need to be able to function in society okay. not that i could prescribe that because like i said that's 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 if they commit a crime, certainly. If they commit crimes, yeah. That, like I said, we're going to get that part of our push is to get rid of qualified immunity. Okay, let's move on. Dan and Lana, you can I have a question, please. All right, Kelvin, I'll go to you after Dan and Lana. Then I'll get you. Okay. Then I'll get Charlie. So, Dan and Lana, go ahead. Okay, the, the minimum wage kept going up until 1970. <laughs> And I guess libertarian started in 71. So the, the minimum wage is now $7.25 an hour. If it was right, it would be $23 an hour. Do you, do you really want to lower the minimum wage? That's my question. Do we really want to go with no minimum wage? Is that your question? Is that what you asked? Yes, let's. I mean, I'm not speaking for all libertarians here, but I think certainly we should abolish the minimum wage. Because I think it would encourage union membership, and I think it would encourage uh, you know people to uh, learn how to bargain better. So and, are you for? Uh, also, the government has no business imposing uh, price floors. So are for labor. To learn how to bargain better. Because price floors can create shortages. You outlaw yeah. the union. The minimum, you know, if you have a high minimum wage, you're going to dissuade employers from hiring more people. We wouldn't want to do that. Though. Most workers uh, already uh, are not, you know, don't work for the minimum wage anyway. So, okay, um, Kelvin, go ahead. Kelvin. Okay, my question is, um, how would the libertarian party? tackle uh one of the major problems that's facing most western uh countries and developing countries that one of the falling demographics the fact that we have a, a, a declining birth rate and an, an increasing uh, age of population so there will be a, a continuing strain upon the uh the workers who are actually in employment you know, of, of, of employment age to provide whatever social services and even under a libertarian society i assume that, that certain uh taxations would still be around uh, for the police the military the highways etc uh the fire service um how would you tackle the fall the falling the changing demographic would it be with a less safe uh um act of on un, uh, unrestricted migration or would you bite the bullet and try and in, in, introduce some form of social control with tax breaks uh and free childcare for indigenous uh population to encourage uh, uh families of indigenous population or would you just say are you asking uh, the unrestricted the unrestricted migration We'll take care of it because we're an affluent society. How will the Libertarian Party take care of the take care of the demographic problem of declining birth rates in, in advance? And countries. will the Libertarian Party encourage Indigenous people to procreate? Was that were those your basic questions? Yes, through social control programs, or would you just say, well, why don't we just have uh, unlimited migration? And that will take care of it. So any... I actually do support more migration into the United States uh, uh, because they will have lots of kids and become U.S. citizens yeah, yeah. and will contribute to the tax space. Uh, I've flown, you know, from Chicago to Arizona and Chicago to Vegas and whatnot. And there's a lot of open space. So... Uh, certainly, if people want to, yeah, there's a lot of open space, but not much water, and, and uh, help us with our uh, apparent problem with demographics, <laughs> then yes. Uh, in, as far as encouraging people to procreate, 
The United States already does that to a degree. I mean, we've got like child tax credits and stuff. And yeah. then we also are very generous. With yes, but I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 forgive me, I, I, I kind of get the idea that the Libertarian Party is anti Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, one bullet time back there, guys. Okay. And I'm sorry, Calvin, what was that last thing you said? I get the impression that the Libertarian Party is anti social control through government and legislation. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, we're for, we, we certainly want to prohibit murder and theft, and you want to control. No, no, I mean, these, 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 are, these are given uh, murder as a crime as you know, the start of any constitution. But, um, you know, I get the impression you've got you are you guys are anti social social control through uh, big government and uh, well, I'm not sure what you mean by social try, control. Try, try, trying to steer I mean, people in, in, in various ways. Killing. Would you would you be in favour of trying to steer people in certain ways if it was beneficial for society? Like how? Well, it, uh, encouraging um, you know larger families, etc. So the United States does that. Already, uh, they they give you tax. Credits. Yeah, I know you do it already. I'm I'm asking what the Libertarian Party would do. Um, you know, I actually would. I mean, it's not really the government's job to really encourage people to give to be horny and to create more children. Um, that's Hollywood's job. Uh, you you don't need that's the government Hollywood's to do job. that. You you got people to do that already. I mean. I'm for a horny bill. Uh, people, people like to uh, procreate on their own. You don't, I don't think you really need encouragement. Uh, well, no, 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 no. People, yeah, no, 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 let's, let's, let's get it right. People, people like to have sex, right? That's not the same as somebody procreating. Women are putting off having children to later on in their career. Well, I guess the average, the average birth rate, the average birth rate in America is around about one point six. Would you be like against abortion or something? Uh, I wouldn't be against abortion, but I would be in favor of, I mean, for a government, uh, of, like, for, for example, providing free childcare. How about banning Manchester United from coming at, at, to make the soccer more fair in Britain? <laughs> Uh, if, if, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess universal health care or child care, or whatever. I mean, how about how about, how about just like buy, how about buying McDonald's as a cultural fucking imperialist? Anyway, um, they, you know, who's a cultural? Yeah, I'm, so, I'm seriously. I, I mean, there are things you can do. You can socially engineer or encourage. Okay. Um, you can you can encourage behavior. Right. For example, you no no no. For for example, you could put a very high tax on alcohol to discourage people from from drink, drinking too much. Uh, uh, Charlie, you could, Charlie, you could you could also put a, a, a tax question. on sugar. You could put a tax next on sugar question. to stop people being obese and suffering from okay, diabetes. Okay, Calvin. I actually like this little discussion. All yeah, right, no, no, no. Nice little yeah. side. Let's, let's, let's question and answer period. It is. We're gonna yeah. run. We'll just let. I was just letting it go a little bit because Kelvin had had a chance to speak. All right, uh, Kelvin. Thanks a lot. We're gonna go oh, to okay. Charlie, yeah. we're gonna Alexa. Charlie, go ahead. Unmute yourself, Charlie. You got your hand up. Yes, I request that you kindly maintain control of the meeting and we stop interjecting. Control. My specific question is. To the two candidates who are running for the 14th district. And I would like to know specifically what is the criminal situation in that district? How many police calls are there annually? Homicides, break ins, assaults? How many police presently? How many roving patrols are there? How many vehicles? And what do they intend to do if elected to alter that situation? Good question. I don't know that that situation, unfortunately, and I don't know until I know what it is. I'm not sure how it can be altered. All right. Well, and it's a, if I may jump in there as well, uh, you can also look on my website where I do have the uh, the crime maps and the heat maps and things like that. They're all provided by 
uh, Chicago Police Department. Why don't you tell me? Police forces. Why don't you tell me a summary? Charlie, you didn't know what a straw man was a minute ago. Like you. But I, but, I, but, I, but to add to that, I can also say that uh, just outside my house, four days ago, we had gunfire right outside my house. That's an anecdote. One bullet at a time, that's, Charlie. That's, that's not an anecdote. That's that's that is something that absolutely happened. Okay. Is it a high uh, crime area or a low crime area? Charlie. Charlie, what are the crime statistics? I don't think he district? knows. Neither well, one they knows. Let's finish the dialogue between Charlie. Neither and... one knows. Okay. What's the so? What's your you already you already asked the question, right? Charlie, one fool at a time. All right, let's go on to Alexa. Yeah. Okay, Alexa, you're next. Go ahead, Alexa. Okay. Well, I just want to say, well, I. I... I deal with like numbers for a living and just to say, I can't re recall a bunch of statistics off the top of my head. So I think that was kind of a weird segue there, but um, I was just wondering if you guys could talk about um, kind of the red, the additional red tape that um, the other parties impose on um, libertarians and other third parties to kind of you know, keep us down and keep us out. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time understanding your question. I, admittedly, I was a little distracted there. Could you please repeat that? Um, yeah. The what kind of issues have the libertarian has the libertarian party faced regarding like it basically the other parties systemically, um, you know, keeping them out? So the Democratic Party. My amount of money is the amount of money you need to be rich. If you have less money than me, even by a single cent, you're a fucking brokey, a wagey, a peon, a peasant, a nobody. You <laughs> All right, so we just got trolled. But, uh, so, so, so the Democratic Party, ironically, is against democracy. Um, so they put, along with the also ironically the Republican Party, they like to put impediments on the ballot to ensure that it's hard for people who aren't Democrats or Republicans to get on. So, for example, in the state of Illinois, D's and R's mean a certain percentage of their, you know, vote in the last election to determine how many signatures they collect. Uh, if you are not the established party in Illinois, you need 25,000 signatures minimum, which is usually five times or so the minimum that Democrats and, and Republicans have to. So even though the party is smaller, uh, we have to collect, you know, roughly five times as many signatures. Um, and then there's also, you know, sometimes coordinated. Uh, I've heard uh, this past election cycle, the media um, will not cover the period because they're not part of the major parties. So, you know, in, in a race like Nico's for, for uh assessor you know a libertarian in the assessor's race i think is pretty big news especially after the republican couldn't you know the republican got kicked off for silly reasons so there, there's a media sort of bias against giving us uh, uh any sort of platform in addition to the government literally making us uh, you know collect more than any other candidate uh, any other established candidates um what else? Am I missing anything? No. Um, Jesse White. Partisan. So we were on equal footing in this one. That's a new twist. Sure. I was going to say Jesse White, but then um, the oh, yeah. uh, thank you for reminding us. Uh, so we, we did have a candidate who ran for Secretary of State named Jesse White. Uh, he was the uh, he was in C uh, Sedalia or uh, Bandia? Central Centralia. Centralia. I might, I think, maybe I'm getting a city in Missouri mixed up there, but uh, he uh, he lived down the street from the uh, Secretary of State's office in his town, and he would get hate mail from people to, you know, <laughs> so he kind of had this interest in in the Secretary of State's office, um, and when he ran, they challenged his petitions because partially they thought that uh, Democratic voters would Think that he was the Jesse White that is stepping down. The current, you know, the, the last just stepped down. Jesse White just stepped down, uh, or I guess, yeah, he didn't seek re-election. So they tried to litigate us basically to death uh, 
or to, because we ran somebody named Jesse White. So, you know, we in the Libertarian Party does not have the, you know, coffers to pay fancy lawyers to uh, fight off some of these challenges. So there's several different ways that. Oh, shush! Tate's here. He's buying all of it. We don't fuck around with you asking your stupid questions about price. Tell me. I don't know how much any of this shit costs. Uh, I kind of like my questions being bookended with those troll videos. Oh, that, 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 yeah, I just removed them, so I just did. Is there any other questions? Yeah. All right. I'd like to yeah. know what the libertarian response is to the ban they put on restaurants and bars with smoking. Would you guys be willing to lift that and have it left up to the individual owners of the business? Yes. Yes, yes we would. Uh, sir, I mean, I'm, I'm, hope I'm, most libertarians would agree with my position here that, yes, individual establishments should uh, have, you know, if they want a smoking section. Um, entire, uh, my, 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 my answer is just, I'll say, should, uh, one bullet time, uh, Calvin. Uh, then they certainly should should do that. Uh, if you do not, the rest of you are sitting there going, "Hey, I might be able to buy a BMW." Then you're fucking broke. And there's ways you can use DVDs forever, own. and I can show you at a later time. Yeah. Uh, but um, yes, uh, establishments should be the ones who make that call. Uh, I, 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 can I can I just I I come as a smoker. Guys, from a country where we've had uh, a ban on smoking for about, well, about maybe about ten years now, right? And at first, Charlie, I was with you. How dare, how dare they, how dare they restrict my right to smoke? And then you know what? A lot of places go. People who don't smoke don't need to smell our cigarette smoke when they're eating. Okay, right? Okay, Calvin. No, but there's a there's a plus. There's a plus because. We become snapcasts, right? You will believe the number of people I have met because we've been outside of the pub or the bar or the cafe or the restaurant, or we've been like in, 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 in a forced into the, the the beer garden at the back when okay. it's when it's raining. No, so no. I, it is. It's become a. We become a a social. Cast onto ourselves the smoking community, and it it, it it actually is a bonding exercise for the smoking community to be forced outside. Okay, let's let the libertarians finish. Go ahead. One bullet time, by the way, back there, guys. All right, let's let's let our our next guy rebut. As, as far as as far as your your question about smoking in, in restaurants or any kind of establishment, I think that the government already put places too much. Too many regulations on business to begin with. And I think that that's just a fool's errand to sit there and say, oh, well, you can't let people that want to enjoy themselves by doing this to themselves. Oh, well, it's harmful for them. Well, you know what? It's their business. I think that individual liberty should shine through here. Mm -hmm. if, if you have an agreement with a restaurant owner that says, yes, you can smoke in my place, you shouldn't have the government come and kick in the door. And uh, yes, but you, you have the you already if, had you had the card so if it doesn't hurt anybody else okay. right? what about the staff that work in that place? the individual liberty did not yes but your individual liberty impinges upon the health of the staff that are working there nobody's forcing them to work there buddy okay Kel kelvin let's let him finish with their stance because we've been having it. Anybody else? Nobody forces you to go to establishment. Nobody forces you to work there. All right. We got another question over here. So go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I know what the question is. Uh, quick comment. The, the, the you can save it for rebuttals if it's a comment. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I'll leave it all, so. all right. Jake, you got a question? Go ahead. Jake, go ahead. You got your hand up. Muted. Jake, you're muted. You got your hand up. You're muted, Jake. Unmute and ask your question. Maybe if we tell him he's muted a few more times, he'll unmute. Okay. That's all right. We're coming. Okay. Jake, you've got a question. You want to unmute and ask it real quick? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you now. Can you, can you hear me? 
this is this is yes. not a question. This is a re, this is a response to a previous question. Um, I'm I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that during the rebuttals. Okay. I got all right, one all last right. question. Charlie, and go to rebuttals. All right, Charlie. Your last question. Charlie, you got your hand up. Last question. Yes. All right. Uh, organized religions uh, usually in, uh, present a doctrine or theology or a catechism that which everyone as a member has to agree to. And I see similarities between what organized religions do as a requirement for membership that the Libertarian Party does. You issue all the time, even on your emails, this statement of principles. All I don't the see other political system. parties doing that. Um, why, are we, why do we have a statement? Is, is, is this a religion? Is Can I answer theology? that question, actually? Um, I think Marxists don't have that, um, you know, in their emails because it would be, you know, about how we use violence to uh, get people to do what we want. I think they're ashamed of themselves. I think the Democrats and the Republicans and all these other political parties are too ashamed of themselves, to be honest. So, yeah, that's why we're not afraid to state our principles. And I'm an atheist, by the it's, way. Uh, to, to you're afraid. To but you overemphasize that at every oh, turn. Charlie, let's not violate our own rules here. So Charlie, as you, as I'm sure you recall from the presentation, we are in a party of principle. I said that several times. Uh, and yes, then, and I'm saying, I don't see the other political people, Republican party. Because they're ashamed. Okay. ashamed. okay, let's uh, answer the question. We'll take Kelvin and he'll be so, the last question. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking on bridge on the idea nobody forced you to work here. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. Okay, you see a homeless guy on the street in the tent. You see a homeless guy in the street on the tent. You say, get a job. Right? Get a job. Now, has not that has not that person got the rights when they when they when they're in a job that's not actually killing them, right? You know, you are you saying okay, okay, well. In the, in your your argument is it would say and you say, it would, say, and you say, say okay well there's five five year olds crying out the fifties clean them right no. um, nobody you don't have and to take the job you don't have to take the job they're arguing about don't have to take a job working with us don't have to take a job down a coal mine right and all this other stuff you don't have to take a job in a bar. That's full of smoke. Okay, it's causing you bad health. No, you have a right where you work to do your job. Your job is serving beer, right? Or or drinks. Okay, your job is what the heck is your question? Die because okay, of uh, smoking. All right, no, I smoke. But, uh, it's my okay. we're, we're, as soon as I get Enrique's question, he hasn't had one right, yet. Hey, Enrique. All right, Enrique, go ahead. Am Enrique, I on? We, Can you hear me? Yeah, we can Am I on? hear you. Okay, yes. quick question for the libertarians, and my voice is a little raspy, so I apologize. When will a libertarian ever get elected to the U.S. House of Representatives or to the U.S. Senate? And two, if there were a libertarian in either of those two chambers, and their vote was a critical, pivotal vote for electing a Speaker of the House uh, mm -hmm. on the part of a Republican or a Democrat or a Senate majority leader, who would the libertarian side with? As case in point, when Kevin McCarthy was finally recently elected as speaker, who would the libertarian fight with? That those are my two questions. Thank you. So when will there be? I can't answer that question. We did have Justin Amash. He wasn't elected as a libertarian, but he changed parties as uh, as as a congressman, and um, he introduced some legislation and even a constitutional amendment during that time as a L in the uh, House. Um, as far as who we would rally around for uh, uh, speaker, we actually, Justin Amash put himself out there as speaker. So a lot of libertarians were rooting for Amash. Um, but um, just this last month. Yeah, this last month. So. Paul, right? Uh, 
Oh, Ron Paul, yeah. He's probably the closest, closest that we have as far as the wooded area. And, uh, and Tom, right now. Oh, Rand Paul. Yeah, Rand Paul. And then you got Tom Massey, and then you got you know, a few others. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Rebuttal time. I'm going to. All right, Tim, throw me in the queue for one. I got to see. What are they refuting? What's the rebuttal in response to? Like libertarian. Well, anybody, can do a rebuttal. anybody can do a rebuttal. The rebuttals are go ahead up there and explain what they are, my friend. Who's got the All right, you've got the microphone there. I'm going to get you up there. So go ahead, uh, explain the rebuttals process, and uh, we'll apportion out the time as to about three minutes apiece. So go ahead, Dave, and explain what's going on. All right, you can rebut anything that the speaker said, or during your three minutes that Tim just portioned out. You can say any damn thing you want, but it must, you can't talk for more than three minutes. Three minute rebuttal time. All right, who's going first? All right, I'd like to get uh, somebody online like to go first. Oh, okay. let's go first. Yeah. Calvin, we'll get you three. Right. We'll, go, we'll go three minutes, Calvin, and then we'll go to uh, Jake for three minutes. Okay, Calvin, okay. go ahead. Okay. Um, one of you guys is on a few months ago, and he said that the one of the greatest um, uh, determined deter, uh, determined uh, de deterrent of uh, social mobility was regulation. And I thought about this, and I thought about something very, very, very basic, which is bread. Right now, the libertarian ideal is that it is encapsulated by Nobody sits around uh, and calculates how much bread Chicago needs tomorrow, right? Basically, bakers make enough bread. Uh, some, uh, retailers order just a little bit more than they normally have, so they got a bit of extra. And more or less, you get all... You know, nobody goes without bread in Chicago, right? But one of the other uh, problems with social mobility, right? is health. You can't be very socially mobile if you're not actually ambulatory. There's a, there was a disease in America called Pellegra. Now, don't, don't kick yourself, beat yourself up if you've never heard of it. Most doctors have never come across it nowadays. But it was actually very prevalent. It, it affected about 3 million Americans before in between the wars. And there was a, a scientist called uh, uh, Joseph uh, Greenberg, a Jewish guy. Um, he proved that it was not an infectious disease, but it was a dietary one. And it was solved by adding niacin to, to bread flour. So every loaf of bread you have, it's got, a, it's got that regulation from the government that says there's niacin in, in that bread flour, but nobody tells you how many, nobody tells you, your, your local Walmart how many loaves to order. There's no government dictat on this. It's just, we live, it's the hardest thing to argue for is the reality that we live in a mixed economy. We live in a, a mixture between capitalism, laissez-faire capitalism, and socialist governments. And it's, it, it's on shades of grey. It's like a loaf of bread. Lo nobody, nobody tells you how many, how many loaves of bread to order. But they do say you've got to put some ni ni niacin in, in the bread to stop kids from getting polygraphs so they can play sports. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Kelvin. Uh, I'm substitute moderating for Tim, and we'll try not to use too much profanity. Mm. Uh, Jake, we've got you up next. I believe you called in. Right. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Give us your wisdom. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, um, I'm I'm a I'm a devout uh, I'm a devout atheist. I prefer uh, uh, disorganized religion. Uh, anyway, about the about the comment concerning um, smoking in bars and restaurants, I. 
Uh, I support I support the ban. Um, I'm very allergic to cigarette smoke, and I have a right to go into a rest bar or restaurant uh, without ha- without worrying about getting an asthma attack from it. And more importantly, the real reason the ban was was put in place is for the people who work in the bars and restaurants. They have a right to work there without uh, uh, worrying about the uh, possibility of of uh, in, uh, uh, coming down with uh, cancer or other illnesses from uh, inhaling hey, second, hey. secondhand smoke all night. Yeah, hey, from a smoker here, hey, I agree. All right. All right. Is that the end of uh, your rebuttal, Jake? Yeah. So that's, that's all I was going to say. Oh, one one other thing too. I wasn't I wasn't clear from the presentation. This is more of a question as to. Uh, you 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 talk you talked about you, you talked very vaguely about what you would do on these uh, uh, police councils. I would want to know what uh, how would you deal with the problem of uh, street crime on a uh, um, you know <clears throat> a street crime uh, in real time as it's happening. Well, too late. Uh, well, over. when when. when when they give final remarks, if we have a, enough time left, traditionally the uh, speakers who give the main presentation can give a response. This group tends to okay. run long winded, so we don't always right. have a lot of time on the back end. For the, Tell me about it. For, for the main speakers to <laughs> give a response, but it's good to note. Yeah. Uh, and of course, okay. when I went pretty, watching my mouth here, pretty bloody far afield. I know that's more profane for Britain. Sorry, Kelvin. Uh, soft for North America. Uh, Tim left me here unattended without me knowing who is next in line after Jay. Um, is it uh, St. Charles of Paydock? Hold on, how do I, I can't, hold on. Can I ask to unmute? There we go. Charlie, are you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, it's a little premature, but I'll go ahead. First of all, let me thank. Our- oh, Charlie, you're muted again. Actually, can I can I just say, but while Charlie's moving, can I just say something? In, uh, you know, in in uh, in, uh, in favor of the smoking ban, from a smoker's point of view. Okay. Now, there's a reason why we smoked. We started smoking, right? We wanted to be with the cool kids. Right, we were the guys like we were. We were the, uh, we were the guys who were, wanted to be guys with the leather jackets, right? And there's a reason why we smoke, right? Now, if you've got a load of smokers in a in a bar or a cafe, uh, then you know you're all scattered. Would you have to go outside for a smoke? You're all together. We become this collective of uh, nonconformists outside snout barren, snout casts, I call us. <laughs> snout cast. And you, uh, so you, you will believe the women and the guys and the people you talk to because we're all now, we're, we're all part of like this subversive club, which is smoking. All right. Kelvin, I appreciate your uh, wisdom, and this is someone who struggled with tobacco over the years myself. Charlie is unmuted, and then we've got Ellen on deck after Charlie, because we got Charlie got cut off accidentally. So, um, and I'll just say, Kelvin, it's a lot easier when it's outside in San Francisco than outside here in January. Uh, oh, we su- no, no, we no, we you have to suffer for your ass. Oh uh, well, you know me, baby. Yeah, you know, you, you know, have and, to and, suffer and, for and, your ass. You know, you have right, to suffer. And, and, uh, if someone who's allergic to cigarette smoke, that's not my problem. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, go on to uh, our next rebuttal. Charlie is next. So go ahead, Charlie. You got three minutes. All right. First of all, I'd like again to thank our two representatives of the Libertarian Party, 
for a nice overview of the policies and principles and an update uh, on your successes mm -hmm. in the uh, past election uh, and best of luck in the upcoming uh, contest. Um, the uh, thing I, and I have spoken on this on one or two occasions already, that um, the, I've sat through this program already several times because the Libertarian Party doesn't understand the concept of currency. And there are issues and problems confronting the federal, state, and local levels of government, the people residing in, in those spheres. And you normally in campaigns come up with a list of issues that are that are concerned to people at that given time and place. And you address these. Instead, I'm given the same old, same old statement of principles, and perhaps some pen and ink changes were made to from time to time, uh, which is some sort of strange political doctrine, when I say written by perhaps eccentrics. Uh, <laughs> you've got to become a general political party. Uh, I see that you're fairly close <coughs> in ideology to the Republicans. So I don't perceive any clear distinction between the two parties. Um, the uh, anyhow, I'd like to see I some currency of issues um, and some thought given to <coughs> a campaign. Now, before you begin applauding yourself mm -hmm. on your successes, the very Worst, one of the worst candidates we had in the Green Party in that election got 22% of the vote. The best the Libertarian did in a two-person contest was 17. The Green Party candidate was so bad, she wanted me to be her campaign manager. And I adamantly, I carefully and diplomatically declined to do so because she was such a poor quality candidate. So that's what I mean. The worst candidate that we ran uh, uh, surpassed the best that the libertarians did. My suggestion is it's easy to offer suggestions. Um, I would suggest that you maybe begin anew each campaign, get these past tired slogans, uh, reiterating the same thing over and over. You don't solve current problems with yesterday's solutions. Um, the, uh, I mean, there's a problem of people, he brought it up, people not earning a living wage and i hear solutions is the same old opposition to uh, uh minimum wage which would decrease the wages uh well that makes no sense it's not campaigning it really isn't you have to use inductive logic and look at the situation and say this is what i think we can do to improve the situation. Now, Obama ran a campaign. Well, Charlie, you're and behind him, he always up, up, Charlie. That said change. Next and speaker. I would like to know what changes is up. the Libertarian Party yeah. is planning to do to improve our city and our state. Thank you. Okay, he's done. But go ahead, Alexa. We'll get you next, and then we'll go to uh, we'll go to uh, we'll we'll go to uh. Okay, okay, Ellen, go ahead. We'll get then. Uh, Alexa, we'll get you after that. Okay, Ellen. 
All right, Ellen, you're next. Ellen, don't make me regret Ellen, you're next. Ellen, really. Ellen, you're next. Three minutes, Ellen. I was just asking uh, Justin um, where Alexei got the idea that I was a rapid anti Semite. He said that I was sending him messages last night and he blocked Not last me. Last night. When? Last week. Last week. Could that be a troll other than me? But was there something like anti Semitic right. in there? I do think they take people and um, impersonate them and misrepresent them. And that, that's the kind of. You sent me. Uh, you sent me a thing here on January 11th, the truth about Ukraine, and it's a video of some dude. And then you sent me another one about Pfizer. And, uh, and, so, and then and the, the Twitter. This is from some. So you, you shared a tweet with me, and then in the tweet it said that all pharmaceutical companies producing the vaccine belong to the same company that is in the hands of the same globalist whose nationality cannot be mentioned because it is anti-Semitism with a emoji. I don't think that's me. And then I got another I, I got another uh, message from you. Um, uh, I don't know. You sent me several. And, 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 I think uh, there's somebody blocked... misrepresenting me. And that this is this is the issue that I wrote down on the green card. I, mean, I, was trying, I, was to order for I don't think that's me. That's yeah, digital signs. Okay, uh, um, let's let's get okay. to the rebuttal. This is a real issue, though. Uh, I wrote a ten-page uh, explanation of why I wanted to be on the green party. I was on the green party, and uh, this was in 2020 when um, they, but for special reasons, you could just be on the ballot. That's the challenge: getting on the ballot. I tried in, you know, two years before to get on the ballot uh, okay. for mayor and alderman. And so, um, but then Charlie, uh, I was on the ballot and then there was a, they put it off for two weeks and 10 people said, uh, um, they put somebody else on. And I, I go, who is he? And it, it was like, um, he didn't write anything. And if you looked at my right. 10 pages, there's nothing anti-Semitic. So the question is, you know, is it legal for somebody to impersonate me, go around saying anti-Semitic things or whatever, and get smeared online? I mean, how just is this system? How does our political system work? You know, that's why I'm here. Patrick says, let's start our own, okay? And, uh, you know, that's what people suggested. I, you know, it's, it's so, it makes you angry, you know? Um, I just asked, uh, I would think some of you people would be friends at this stage. I mean, my yeah. ideal, I was in a John Dewey school. I, you know, an MBA, an MED. I studied Rousseau and Socrates. I was a teacher for three years with the philosophy of education to have people, you know, in a democracy come together and um, solve our problems, you know, uh, mutual, okay. right? But if it's time to have okay. All yeah, right. And, and as you roll your eyes, okay. I, I want to say one I'll, thing, okay? Okay, finish. Jim, come on. Yeah, finish up and we'll go I to will Alexa. be starting a new one, okay? And that's, that's why I announced it here tonight, okay? Ellen Corley's democracy for an honest, democratic yeah. person. Here, here. All right, Alexa, Alexa you're, you're next. You. Alexa, you're next. <laughs> Okay. All right. I mean, how am I supposed to follow up? Did she just create her own political party? Is that what she said? I, look, look, man, I, I don't know what was. I wasn't even going to say anything afterwards because I figured it wasn't her business, my business. But like, I, all I said was, is this the woman who got kicked off the Green Party because of, you know, they thought she was a neo-Nazi who was anti-Semitic. That, that's all I asked. I never said that she was or that you know that the green party was correct in thinking she was or any of that stuff like i, I just uh, i just wondered if it was the person who who had that had been said about i i don't know i wasn't i wasn't trying to just i don't know i just saw a lady being kind of crazy and i was like oh are you that one crazy lady um yeah but sorry if that was rude of me i didn't want to that, that, that's probably not fair um, actually, anyway actually, um to, to, to answer the lady's question um 
Wait, what, what uh, dude, dude, why it, are you interrupting legal, me? Dude, what is, is your deal? Dude, is excuse me, what is your deal? This is my time. This is my time. What are you doing? Okay, well, saying random shit. Alexa, go ahead. Yeah. Um sorry about that. Okay, yeah. Um sorry, I just that that wasn't really fair to me. Um but yeah. Sorry. Anyway, with the whole like First of all, I, I just, hmm. um, oh man, sorry. Uh, like time. regarding the whole um thing about you know abolishing minimum wage and stuff. See, the problem is with this is that if you give somebody a you know a minimum and you write that number out, they choose the minimum because it's written out, um, or whatever. Or well, I mean, because be, it's the because it, it's the lowest. By actually eliminating the minimum wage, you are encouraging businesses to think about and reflect on what they pay their employees, what their work is worth, etc. And they would be therefore competing with each other in these uh, lower level industries that tend to make less money for those workers and the best of them. So that's why that is that way. You look up libertarian paternalism. Um, it's um okay i I don't i I don't even know people are saying crap about like i'm just trying to think of the weird stuff like oh man you guys must be a weird religion religion because like um you know because we have a we have our principles and we're not afraid to stand by them and apparently that makes us like psychotic or whatever which is ridiculous also the, the whole idea that lady presented about like free free speech and all the idea that people were impersonating her look i get people call my party conspiracy theorists and stuff but that was some crazy crap there that was a little bit ridiculous um i uh, oh man she's she's freaking out again isn't she um damn it uh but yeah, um, no personal attacks. That's right. No personal sorry. Attacks. I was just simply reflecting on what was said. I just thought it was weird. And that is my opinion. All I was going to say is um, if somebody has stolen their identity, well, that's that's less safe uh, uh, deregulation for her. I'm sorry. What did you say? Uh, if somebody has stolen their identity and impersonated her. Well, that's less a fair deregulation for you. You don't have a right to your own identity. People can do it. There's no regulation. If there's no regulations, then you know people are going to steal from you. I'm sorry. Up, is there a up business to our, up centered to around our, up, to our, up to and including your identity and make false statements? If that's what you, if what how much is, did somebody sell your identity to you for? How much is your identif- identity worth on a monetary level? I don't even know what the heck you're talking about. This is some dumb straw man. All right, what I'm going to um, say is this. I think we got a perfect example. Uh, yeah, no, no, well, what was that? No, you, 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 can, you can steal my purse. My and not barely money. You cannot steal my, if you steal my good name, that is, that, 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 that is priceless. Okay, Kelvin, let's go on. All right, you got oh, the bubble. Go ahead and get up there. I won't even take all the time. Oh, all right. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm Luke, and uh, I just would like to make a, a several comments. The first one is on these personal attacks. Um, they're the lowest form of argument, making a personal attack. And I really think that uh, the college with uh, complex has a uh, higher standard. <laughs> That was a little bit of laughter to me, but, uh, but it really is uh, the the, uh, the rhetoric and the with the ancient uh, Greeks talked about the the, the, the personal attacks uh, at uh, at a hominem attacks, and so if you don't have anything else to really say, go after a personal attack. So I um, um, I, I think that's uh, something good to remember. I'd like to say something about smoking. You know, in the public place, I understand why you know you can't smoke it. but i live in a smoke-free building so in my own home 
They're telling me that I can't smoke, and I, I think that really is an inclusion. And, uh, and what but yeah, to, 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 quote, to quote the previous speaker, nobody forces you to live there. It's my turn to talk. Just, so, um, nobody forces you to live there. It's my, my, my turn to talk. One at a time. As far as um, I never said anything of the sort. As far as um, uh, the police council here in Chicago, uh, the new uh, the new process. I, I I think it really is. Uh, an advancement. I, I, I didn't agree with the particular uh, way it was organized or the form of it, but the Chicago Police Department has had, like many police departments, a big, big, big problem for a long, long, long time. And uh, uh, it needs uh, some, uh, some mechanism for the people, the citizens, to really review and, uh, and and try and meaningful make a change in it's uh, it's it's uh, really important uh, uh, that change occurs. Thank you. Uh, sorry, my friend, I, I didn't catch your name. Um, nobody forced you to live in the apartment that you live in. If you're not if you're not allowed to smoke in the, that's what I'm trying. Just muted him again. I just did. Okay. Kelvin, we got, I muted you, so go ahead. Yeah, go you ahead, you're, you're next, you're next. All right. You're next. Can I have the timer? I'm going to get that for you right I now. See it on screen. Go right ahead. All right. Well, thanks again to uh, Chris for running, uh, and for Justin also for running as the second candidate. And was right in, in that district. Um, you know, I think it's hard to give highly detailed plans, especially about officers. Things that are not about the topic of police review. So if you want to throw questions at these guys, like what are you going to do to solve agricultural problems all around the world? You can ask those questions in a free speech forum, forum but it's not necessarily directly uh, relevant to them. Some of the quality of life issues that were brought up, like the, the debates we've been having sort of about smoke-free public spaces is at least in some sense slightly closer to something that a local police department might give a ticket for or a local government might give a ticket for and whether or not this is appropriate enforcement to come before them in terms of this being currency there's two ways i can answer that uh criticism for charlie um when it comes to the devaluation of currency we've been dealing with that problem in the libertarian party since 1971 um because of the galloping inflation, wage and price controls leaving the gold standard in 1971. So that kind of currency we've been on top of. Uh, but to complete my dad joke, in terms of current problems, the case in Memphis shows that there is a problem with police violence. And now we have five non-white officers who a non-white man, where it's a big problem. It's not just white supremacy or something like that, that sort of attitude. It's some, something that will come up for citizens to review these police cases. Now, these boys can't review that. It's not a Chicago case. It's not like the Memphis case would come up before District 14 Police Council in Chicago, necessarily. Um, but since this is an oversight board, it's not necessarily about designing too many other solutions to other problems. Uh, I had had a separate discussion with Chris, and we didn't get to this in the zoo like atmosphere tonight. Um, <laughs> another candidate we know who's a, not a libertarian, but an independent who came to a libertarian meeting, who's a friend of the late Joshua Flynn, DeAndre Rufus, uh, is also involved out. He's running for police council in a different part of the town further west, but in the 15th district. But he is involved in an after school program where police that are not walking the beach or driving you know, around the district, get to know the youth in this neighborhood so that they won't just chase every kid they see. Um, and that seemed like, so DeAndre had some interesting suggestions that I know Chris and Justin and I have discussed another time before we got to the sort of uh, bizarre collection of questions tonight. Oh my goodness, I've hit three minutes, so I'm gonna steal more time while I say, United Working Families endorsed 18 candidates for Alderman earlier, not 12, 
You can Google it. It's in published Chicago news sources. You can find out what kind of money they have, how deep are their pockets. I mean, deeper than the LP has. They have the CTU and the Service Employees International Union behind them. So they've got more than you know a few thousand dollars in the budget. Um, and still, Brandon Johnson is having trouble making it if he and Chewy Garcia are competing for many of the same voters. Um, other than that, I'll just throw this out because I'm violating the rules of time. Minimum wage, go to a fast food restaurant where they put in automated kiosks. The hourly wage is higher and there's now fewer employees working per shift. I mean, this also happens. It's not some Mickey Mouse universe where if you don't get a higher wage, there's no other job for you to go to or whatever. There's also technologies that will have only three or four people working. Okay. Said oh, don't raise the wages. Please don't raise the wages. Go next and then we'll get you, okay? Bad things will happen to you if you get an increase in pay. All right, Charlie, go ahead, Sid. Okay. Bad things will happen to you if you make more money. All right. Uh, all right. Hold up my what kind of political party uh, is this? Charlie, Charlie, uh, it's Sid's turn. Quiet. Yeah. If I hold up my hand like this, I have no power. But if I go like this, I have a lot of power. Now, look at England when Margaret Thatcher, the so called Iron Lady, was in power. She always said there is no society. We're a collection of individuals. And therefore, individuals have to take their place and do the best they can. Yeah. Now, if we look at history, any history, we find without a unified policy, without a class policy, there is no progress. We take the union. At one time in England, they referred to anybody that was more than three people as, as a combination. And a combination meant some sort of union. But without the union, no, no um, program would be put forward to remedy different situations in society. And without remedying situations, there was no progress. So these types of societies that are class driven don't want people to get into groups and organize. They're very trivial. Let's say you take black people or any other large city, and you merge them with the Latin people, you have a little far stronger force to change than just having one people. So, so the class that really runs the site that is the property class, and this has been a long since civilization began, that the property classes we're all always the ruling class. And they try to split people apart. So there was no progress and they make slaves out of them or, or a feudal society, give them a little land and have them work for the, uh, for the feudal boss and the things along that line. And they had no power. But when they got together and revolted, and there was one time, I don't remember the exact uh, uh, date, but the peasantry, the feudal people, rebelled. And they couldn't get nothing done. But the trouble was, they had no unity. They had no program. So they lost. But the ruling class, all of them always has a program and is united and uses the police, uses the armed forces, uses coercion to put them in their place. Okay, so we're so they're always organized. 
Okay, let's, uh, our gentleman up here is next. Somebody wants to hand him the mic. And we're going to get you next, sir. And uh, you got uh, three minutes and we'll, we'll, uh, we will. All right, go ahead. So, uh, you need to walk over here. That's fine. Can you hear me? Okay? Yeah, we can, we, can, we can hear you. We can see you. Anyway, um, I come from a union family. My dad was in the IBW for about 50 years. Myself, I was at minimum wage. I remember without minimum wage, I'd be forced to work as a slave. And I could be getting paid at all. Whenever there's no minimum wage, the salary's always lower. It's never higher. That's fantasy. Um, and the fact remains, without a good wage, white collar workers would be getting paid nothing. So this idea we don't need to have wage controls because those in power will pay higher, it's fantasy. It's like having a tollway. You're gonna pay for the tollway in front of your house. The next person's gonna pay for that section of the highway, it's fantasy. Like that libertarian town in, in Maine, it's vacant. Domestic abuse went through the roof of this libertarian run town. It's there as an example, it's a, it's a concept like democracy, like communism, there was no country that ever exercised these things. They're only concepts. And all I can say is, you know, once I worked for the Teamsters at UPS, my wages tripled from Jewel. Triple. I went from 222 an hour to 666. In 81, I was making 1350 an hour at UPS loading the semis. And in 83, when I left the job, I was still making thirteen fifty an hour. Today, that's thirty-three dollars an hour. And all know what the Federal Reserve, which you guys didn't talk about, is that's the reason the dollar has gone from what it's worth in nineteen twelve. It's worth one penny from what it was worth when it when the dollar first left uh, the government printing their own money or private bank prints their own money. So we need the IRS because they pay the teller fees to the Federal Reserve. All personal income tax collected. That's a sum total less than what we owe the Federal Reserve annually for what they charge us to handle our money supply. Corporate taxes is what pays for our military. Personal taxes go straight to the Federal Reserve. So I'm going to leave early now. Thank you. All right. What was the name of the town? All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, who else? Who else has a rebuttal? I think there was. Uh, all right, Alexa. We're going to let you go. I, I Alexa, you already had a round, so I'm going to get another one. Come on, okay, you wanna, uh, I'll, all right, I'll, I'll just, uh, okay, hang on here, let me get you the mic. Okay, let's go and uh, let me Appreciate get you start, it, the, start the, the uh, clock again. Go ahead and uh, just stay right where you're at. You're on, you're on candid camera, you're on candid camera. Thank you, I had a couple of uh, comments based on some of the things that were said. Um, uh, Justin mentioned Deidre McCloskey, um, I am very disappointed that Deidre McCloskey was a statewide libertarian candidate. I know for a fact that Deidre um, supported giving money and weapons to the Ukrainians. And if that's supposed to be libertarian, then I guess I don't know what libertarianism is. I would think that that's a direct violation of using the coercive power of the state, taking their taxes and giving it to another country for the purposes of war making. So I, I would uh, say that, again, I'm disappointed that the Libertarians put Deidre McCloskey on a statewide ballot. Um, I would support the Libertarian position on eliminating the minimum wage. Um, one of the ways that it is not discussed is in terms of freedom of association. There are all kinds of freedom of association. There's freedom of romantic association, freedom of political association, and finally, freedom of economic association. If I'm an employer and I want to put out there a job that pays, let's say, less than what someone else would think should be a legislated minimum wage, I should be free to make that offer and freely associate with people who want to take that offer as an employee. Freedom of association is important and minimum wage laws are never talked about in those terms. A master and a slave. I'm, 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 Sorry, Charlie. I'm a talking. master and a slave. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking. Um, you like I'm, that, no, I'm talking, Charlie. I'm talking. I'm going to over talk to you every time. time, time. Um, so that's why freedom, that's one of the ways we can 
decide that frequently uh, that minimum wage laws are wrong is because it is a violation of freedom of economic association oh where's that uh, I, i'm one floor at a time one floor at a time i'm talking i'm talking uh one of the things i'd like libertarians to pay attention to and maybe i'm missing it but um the central bank digital currency that i think is probably coming down the pike i think that is is scary just god awful scary because with a central bank digital currency they'll be able to throttle what you spend how much you spend what you spend on when you spend it they'll be able to track everything it's going to be one giant massive surveillance tool i wish uh, libertarians would talk a little bit more about that and oppose that more explicitly also um the who is trying to uh, forge a pan international pandemic treaty that would uh, compromise the sovereignty of individual nations and the powers that they would have would be uh, god awful dystopian. Um, and that's all I've got for now. Thank you. All right, Alexa, go about one minute. You already spoke once before, but we'll let you go one minute. And then Andy Anderson, and whenever speakers wrap up. Uh, I'd, like, I'd, like, I'd like a little apology for if I may. Good night. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, what? Well, Kelvin, he wants to expose me. He wants to oppose me speaking. No, I just say a little point at some point in time. Okay. All right. Alexa, go ahead. You got one minute. You already rebutted once, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, I don't get why the last two speakers think that you did the mic drop that you thought it was. The Libertarian Party was legitimately like created by a group that was protesting the um the creation of the federal reserve um or the actually i should say no it's not the creation of the federal reserve that was before that but it was the establishment of you were getting rid of fiat currency um so yeah like that's and yeah i mean we do oppose you know fed cryptocurrency or fed you know whatever national bank currency or whatever it's just you don't see it because, well, quite frankly, we don't get representation. Um, but I, I appreciate your suggestions. I was also going to say with the whole, like, smoking thing, I don't think people are saying that, you know, you have to, you know, businesses have to make people, you know, people are going to suffer because businesses make people smoke. It's like, no, businesses get to decide, hey, Will we, you know, will we make more money if we honor people who, you know, want to be able to smoke or if we honor people who aren't, who, you know, don't want to be around smoke or some kind of combination to, you know, give both of them, you know, the opportunity to have a meal. Um, so, yeah, it's just like, also, I mean, there are people now with, like, horrible horrible peanut allergies airborne peanut allergies like that yeah i mean they they weren't even like that 10 years ago um okay I'll but you. like the whole basically i mean I, i've heard of people who like if if somebody had peanuts near them at any point of any day they would have an anaphylactic episode uh, and they basically sadly cannot ex basically exist in a public space because of how you know i mean that's how that's susceptible that's they are to this horrible allergic reaction so you want to ban eating peanuts um like so i mean are you saying that we should just eliminate peanuts from the entirety of society yes. uh, because you're but potentially some people will get ill to something and we got one mean that that's you know you're, you're basically talking about a conflict of special interest groups, you know, people who are. We already again. I let yeah. it go. Oh, not eating allowed at the college. Jake, we're not taking your question because you got one more rebuttal and we got to do the final round. Andy, you're up next. You haven't spoken yet before. Kelvin, you've already been a few times. We're going to go to Andy. Then we're going to let our speakers do the final rebuttal, and then you got. We'll end the Zoom session. You guys should stay online. I'll transfer the control to Charlie. So. uh Jake, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to lower your hand. We're going to, this is our final rebuttal tonight. And then we're going to let the speakers go. So, okay, Andy, you got three minutes. Okay. Uh, our society, uh, we have several pressing problems that should be addressed by all parties. 
some things weren't talked about tonight. Well, one of them, one elephant in the room is that since 1980, America has developed a problem with billionaire creditors. And <clears throat> the idea uh, that you can just cut taxes and have freedom, um, that's a prescription for the disintegration of society. Taxes are what we pay to live in a civilized world. It covers a lot of things. But also, the concept should be everyone should pay their fair share. And we have a welfare problem in America. That's welfare for billionaires. People at the bottom are getting a fraction of a percent of the welfare dollars that are shoveled into the bank accounts of billionaire predators that own and operate our big corporations now. The military industrial complex, we didn't talk about that much tonight, um, is totally out of control. Um, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and I can tell people I was proud of what I, I did. I did my job, but I learned after I got out that I was part of the largest killing machine on the planet. That's what the US military is. It's the largest killing machine on the planet. And if we don't address that issue, then uh, nothing else is going to make much difference. That plus uh, the concept of Exxon and Mobil, they knew 40 years ago that burning fossil fuel produced gases that trap heat in the atmosphere. But they've been lying to us for 40 years. Now we're uh, the kids, kids that are protesting for their climate future realize that they don't have much of a future beyond 2060. Less than 40 years from now, some of our coastal cities are, are going to be underwater. Even if the sea level doesn't come up, the hurricanes are going to be wiping them out and flooding them out once a year. That's where we are on our present course. And, uh, and this thing that came up in Tennessee. We have people in the police department that enjoy beating and killing people if they can get away with it. Those people have to be weeded out, prosecuted, and sent to prison. No other country, modern country, tolerates this kind of bullshit. Not at all. But since 23 years ago, a giant poisonous flag, a tree, was plant, uh, planted in America. And we've gotten the militarization of police all across our country ever since. Heavy military, but let me point second. Our, our government is the only one that is militarizing the police with hardware coming out of the military. Tanks and uh, automatic weapons and all kinds of stuff. And it gives, it gives our police nationwide the feeling that they're just, they're controlling uh, enemy society. Like a lot of our police come back from the military, Iraq and Afghanistan, and they look at us as the enemy. And so, you have to talk about these things and address the problems. They're not going to go away with wishful thinking. So thank you very much. All right, speakers get the final word. Thank you, Andy. The speakers get the final word. Yes. Okay. First and foremost, Andy, I want to thank you for your service. Uh, I know that uh, as an Afghanistan veteran, that uh, we get a lot of the applause and which which your generation did not get much at all as uh, of a warm welcome home. So thank you for your service. The service you did made mine a lot, a lot easier to digest. So thank you for that. Uh, in closing, I just want to remind everybody that uh, when you go to the ballot box, early voting is open by the way, but when you go to the ballot box, you get to choose three people in the police district council. Fortunately for me, I'm only one of two people on the, that are written on the ballot. We do have two writing candidates available. So you get to vote for three. Hopefully, I, if you live in the 14th district, I'm one of those three that you'll choose. Justin, final remarks. Uh, I can individually, you know, rebut things that are brought up, but I just want to, uh, I, I, I just want to think about the future of the College of Complexes because, um, you know, uh, it's a little uncertain. We have, you know, COVID kind of disrupted a lot of things and we're still kind of getting the back to swing of things. By the way, it's good to see Sid. I haven't seen Sid since like three years or how long it's been. And I was actually like worried. I, hope, I was hoping like, 
you know, you made it out okay, and I'm glad you did. Uh, um, so, but, uh, you know, I think that uh, we should start to think about the college of the future. Uh, unfortunately, Charlie and Tim won't be here forever, and somebody's going to have to pick up the mantle, and um, I'm not saying one individual or a handful of individuals should do it, but uh, certainly, maybe we should look into um, yes. that or incorporation, uh, uh, you know, ways that we, we, you know, we didn't collect tuition tonight, and our tuition was, was very modest, and I'm sure it didn't really pay for much, but we can be thinking about, you know, bigger sorts of things. I, I, I recall, look, you know, Googling College of Complexes and looking at all this stuff from the 50s and 60s where they had their own space and they had you know the college two three four nights a week and and this and that and uh and, and i get that you know trying to go back to the good old days might not be something we could do but i would love for the college to continue on for another 70 years and 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 certainly i think that uh some of the regulars who who you know enjoy the college as much as i do we do uh, can think of some things and think about what we can do in the future to to make the college uh, better. And you know, I kind of want. I wish I could travel back in time. You know, when everybody's getting drunk and yelling at each other. You know, like in the good old days of the college. Uh, <laughs> hey, that was cool. That's all I had to say. So if you guys got, you know, if you guys, we should think about the future of the college. So. Uh, Thank you, Justin. We'll well, out soon, but we'll right, wrap it up, David. Wrap it up, David. They know we're yelling at each other now, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'd like to thank. We'd like to thank all of you for coming tonight. Next week's program, if I remember correctly, is going to be about what every American should know about Abraham Lincoln. Out of state. Be here. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys. Uh, we'll end it here. Charlie, I'm going to transfer one more time for our speaker. Okay, Charlie, I'm going to transfer the host controls over to you for the for the for the continuation of the Zoom call. Uh, I'm going to make you host. You um, hang on here. I'm going to stop recording.